Things should be about set up and ready to go here, I believe. Whoa, why am I hearing my own voice? Do I have my stream open somewhere? I apparently do. Oh, let's close that. Gross. Let's not listen to myself. No. Who would ever listen to me? That <laughs> let's not do that. Oh my goodness. What a world. Freaking... Where is my buttons to switch over to? There it is. My goodness gracious. I think I'll probably turn off the chat since on YouTube you can see like the chat replay and stuff anyway. Um, hello, hello, Mortis, Guzma, Cab, and Sachi. Hope you're all doing well today. This is the first stream you've been able to catch so you don't use Twitch. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome to the stream to stream. What you think of it? You probably don't have that much of an impression yet considering the stream only just started and whatnot. Uh, how are you gonna get a point to time yourself out? Yeah, that'd be something cool for YouTube Live to add is like a channel point system. Kind of like Twitch has for you to time 
have I don't think I've ever timed somebody out in a YouTube chat before. I know that in Twitch we have like the points reward to time yourself out for 10 minutes because it's funny. But on YouTube, I I know that you can like ban people. I don't think I've ever timed somebody out. Now I'm very tempted to to like try it for the memes. How would it even be done? I should have don't know. You want to be timed out for the memes cam? <laughs> By chance? I don't even know how it's done. I literally don't even know what the YouTube commands are. <laughs> Straight up. But got a soothing voice of that. So I, well, I'm glad to hear you say that because I've gotten, well, I've gotten several comments on some of my video essays before being like, man, especially my RCT one being like, man, I'd watch his video, but I just hate his voice so much. So I can't watch this that I'm just like, man, <laughs> what, what do you want me to do about that? <laughs> there are things I could change about the channel. My voice is not one of them. Well, technically I could hire somebody else to like read out my scripts, but why would I do that? <laughs> Why would I do that? You put people in timeout, apparently? Is that like a text command there? Maybe, maybe? To care about your voice is great. I appreciate it, Cam. You can't check a boosted Carvias. You can just quickly type it in the Twitch chat, open it up in another menu there. Hire Carvia to read the scripts. Carvia is an antisocial weirdo that's not gonna. He's not gonna freaking want to read things out. He's a freaking psycho. You know, we were playing Metopia yesterday. We were playing Metopia last night. And there was a bit where our Carvia character was <laughs> was singing and some other me asked him, when do you get practice that? He was like, what a mad, when I get so mad and I just sing. And I was joking about how the reason why Carvia doesn't use a mic when he streams is because he's constantly like singing and he's always mad. <laughs> so what's going on here? He like, gives you Gen 5 Pokemon flashbacks to best gen. Yeah, the Harmonia in it is... In a way from Enharmonia. Did you check in the Twitch chat there? Cam at 67% boosted. Wow, that's like two thirds. But yeah, I did yoink Harmonia from Enharmonia because early, there's a there's a bit of a story behind that. Hold on, let, let's go do some research because we have some more legendary Pokemon to go after. And if I can switch over to the proper tab here. The next one that we have to go after is Jirachi, but the one that I just looked up to go after is Manaphy. So maybe we'll go after Manaphy first. That's in Reef Evening. Reef, um, evening. Oh, that probably needs to be research level two. So let's just go to snap some photos. I changed the setting from auto snapping four photos at once to three. Um, but anyway, when it was when I was like in early high school, I had a uh, I had a black hat that was a something that I got from I don't even remember where anymore. But it was this black hat that had like AR on it, and. For a long time, I didn't even know what the AR meant. And, oh, I gotta switch over to this so you can see the number over there. Um, and I looked it up, and it was some, like, random Canadian shipping company or something like that. And I was like, what the heck? Why Why am I freaking... Why am I having this logo on my face? Like, I like kind of things with, like, blank or simple designs. I don't like having logos unless it's something that I, like, directly support or, like, directly believe in or something like that, you know? Like, I typically don't like having logos of things. So I was like, okay, I need a new hat in that case. So I was looking around. I was browsing online for a while for, like, hats that uh just have some sort of a design. But that design isn't an ad for anything. Just some sort of a design that isn't an ad for anything. Let's throw a bunch of stuff in here. And I literally couldn't find any anywhere except for, like, blank black hats. So I was like, well, now what the hell do I do? And then eventually I was like, what if I just, like, throw one together myself? But, like, what kind of design would it be? Hi, Blastoise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, man. Um, and then I recalled Pokemon Black and White. I was like, didn't that freaking end guy have like a cool hat? And I looked it up and it was a black hat with white on the front like that. And I was like, whoa, that's actually a pretty cool hat. Not gonna lie. That was, that's actually a pretty darn cool thing. So I was like, screw it. I'll make it myself. I, w I pulled a Thanos and I was like, I'll do it myself. I'll do it to myself is what I, is what I was like. And uh, well, I got a blank black hat. I got some fabric paint. I got some kind of painting tape stuff to, you know, not paint the parts that I didn't want to paint and whatnot. I got a bag that I put over the whole thing. I have some pictures on my computer of like the process and whatnot. Hey, there's a pre-marina and stuff. Um... I do have some photos on my computer of the process and whatnot. 
So I basically put like a bag over the whole back of this hat and put up some tape so I would just paint this area. And I layered this thing so much, I don't remember how many layers this was, but this is somewhere in the double digits number of fabric paint. And I've had this now ever since the beginning of high school, essentially. Ever since grade 10. Grade 10 is the beginning of high school here. I hear that's apparently like different in the States. So I guess I should re-emphasize there. And I just wrapped up my fourth year of university. So like seven years ago. So seven years ago in that a case. And it was funny, shortly after I made this hat, I freaking, there were some friendos that invited me to Comic-Con shortly after, and I never really done like a cosplay or anything like that before. And I was like, oh, the hat's done. That's the hard part, right? So maybe I'll just make the rest of uh, an Harmonia cosplay. And that's what I did. And I was wrong about the hat being the hard part. There were things that were more difficult to make for that cosplay than the hat. But <laughs> I basically had this hat ever since that freaking, there's something in the blue hole. But it basically happened because I wanted a new hat because I freaking don't like logos for things. And I wanted to have a design that, I guess we're going this way. And I wanted to have a design that, you know, wasn't an ad for something because screw that. Unless it's like something that I actually directly support. So, so there's that. We've done the Enharmonia cosplay on the stream and stream a couple times, usually just for like charity events and whatnot. The hell is that? And then eventually when I got into a when I got into content creation stuff. Apparently, if I hit all these Laprises, there's a thing with Manaphy, but, like, I think I might have to do a prior thing with Manaphy first to cause that to happen. Um, but, yeah, it is literally just cosplaying and with extra steps, essentially. I don't know if smacking them all with Illumina Orbs here will do anything. I probably need to do, like, a prior thing for Bob. Most likely. Lapras, look at that. Beautiful. Sure, that. So, eventually, when I got into content creation later, for a very long time, I didn't really know, like, what kind of username I should have when it comes to, like, anything in general, I guess. And, uh, I was thinking about things for a while, and I was like, wait a second, I freaking already wear the hat, like, on a daily basis of that freaking Harmonia nerd. And freaking Harmonia, and Harmonia's name is very fascinating because it, has a lot of musical kind of connections, and I'm very much a fan of music. I very much like music. Like, my most recent video essay, focusing on Age of Calamity, one of the big focuses of that video essay, was the music and the leitmotifs, for example. So, I'm not... I'm not very good at music myself. Like, I have an electric keyboard and an acoustic guitar, but I suck at both. Um... But I am a big fan of music, to say the least. So I was like, okay. And Harmonia is basically derivative of the word harmonic. And, uh... For, no, gosh darn it. Yeah, show them the things. And enharmonia is basically like a derivative of enharmonic, the term for two different musical notes that are written differently, but sound the same. And I was like, yeah, that, that sounds fitting because like I'm wearing this hat freaking every day anyway. And it's, and the hat is in a way a representation of a character slash name that has a bunch to do with music. And I'm a massive music fan. So Harmonia seemed like a good bet, but freaking everywhere Harmonia is already taken. So I was like, okay, I gotta do something freaking different then. So eventually I came up with Acoustic Harmonia since Acoustic is basically like another word for sound, I guess. Freaking that photo sucks, but it's a three-star thing, my Bob. Um, because Acoustic Harmonia in a way sort of means the sound of music. So eventually I picked up the name Acoustic Harmonia and that's what I started out my kind of content creation journey with was Acoustic Harmonia back in the beginning of 2018 i want to say i think that's yeah the beginning of 2018 is when i started content creation stuff so that's how i picked up that name that's how i picked up that name but most people will freaking look at my name and like default to calling me acoustic when i go by harmonia gosh darn it that photo sucks man but most people will look at my name and be like oh it's acoustic and i'm like no it's not acoustic <laughs> it's harmonia but but Harmonia was taken everywhere, so it's it's Acoustic Harmonia. And that's the that's the story of the name of this channel and the hat and freaking all that all that stuff. I apologize that I've been a little bit behind on chat stuff. I freaking when I get rambling, I get really rambling. Hello, hello, Hawks. How are you doing today? Also, let's uh let's uh, see here. But yeah, I catch you up on the stuff Cam said, Fresh Ride, Harmonia, the Blastoise is a jet, and there's a happy whale lord, and yeah. Um, cosplay is cool and all, but it looks hard. It definitely is. Like, if I grab my, uh, if I grab some parts of my cosplay, I just keep them, like, on the shelf behind me. I keep them, like, on my game shelf when I'm not, I'm not using them. If I can, some parts were definitely hard for my, 
for my end cosplay. Like, for example, this was probably one of the harder parts was, gosh darn it, there's loose hairs. This is what happens when you're a long haired guy. There's the void cube that hangs from a chain on his hip there. That was a bit tricky to get. I had to order like a special kind of Rubik's cube that has no center block. And fun fact, it still like turns and stuff. Like you can still turn it and whatnot. I had to peel all the stickers off, paint them gold, and then like a rubber cement them back onto the cube again was the thing. So, and again, this was a cosplay that was made around the beginning of high school for me. So like, some of the paint, some of the golden paint is starting to like peel off. You probably can't, I don't know if the camera picks it up. Probably can't see it. I wouldn't be able to notice it from a distance anyway. So I guess it's fine. But like there's some blue kind of peeling through there. Yeah, you can kind of see a blue corner there. The paint is kind of peeling off, but, but yeah, the best speed cube we've ever seen, right? Want to see me solve this cube? Whoa, I'm a freaking... I'm a master at that. But yeah, so the cube was a little bit tricky. I'll put that behind me. Behind me for now. Another tricky part was his freaking pendant. I had to I had to freaking get like a bouncy ball. I painted it black. And then it's weird because this pendant has like a couple different depictions. Like one is where the blue ring goes all the way across and the yellow ring goes all the way across. And some other depictions show it going like the yellow ring going halfway is a thing. So the version that I did was the one where the yellow ring went halfway, but there are some depictions of it where the yellow ring does go all the way around as well. But that also means it's very fragile because it's just like glued onto there. The blue ring was cut to like the perfect size, like just measured. So it's just on there from being like super tight and whatnot. But the half yellow ring is just on there from like being glued on there essentially. So if it bumps something with like any force, the yellow bits will straight up come off. So this thing is probably the most fragile part of the whole cosplay, most likely. And then there's like the whole bangles and wristband and whatnot, and those weren't too bad. It's mostly like the the pendant and the cube that were like super tricky. But the thing that I probably spent the most time on, like just time-wise, was probably the hat, since that was a thing that I was putting together without even a, without even a cosplay there. Yeah, new PB, new PB there. Um, also, I can show briefly some of the, I just have a folder on my desktop here. I can show part of like the making the hat thing, Bob. If I can actually minimize all this stuff, my computer's lagging like crazy. My disk C usage is at hundred percent, which isn't even super uncommon anymore. I really need to reinstall windows onto a better drive. I've been using the same drive for like the past decade. Let's see here. Let's see here. I have a folder literally titled hat. Is the thing, if it opens up, if it wants to open up. Does it not want to open up? My disc to use is still at 100%. Oh, there we go. There we go. So this was like freaking forever ago. Can I switch to a desktop capture? Maybe, maybe. Display capture right here. So yeah, look at this photo quality. It freaking sucked. But th that was this hat. That was this hat right here. I basically, it was a blank black hat. I basically marked the area that was going to be painted white and basically surrounded the whole rest to like try to avoid getting paint anywhere else. And then it was basically just putting on layer after layer after layer. And it was very, very rough looking after all them layers. So it had to be sandpapered down to like smooth it out like that from like super rough after all those layers to sandpapered down to be like a lot more smooth. And then it eventually came out looking like that. Man, look how freaking shiny new it looks like there. Isn't that crazy? So that was like seven years ago was a thing. So that was a good while back. And I've been thinking about like redoing my hat, like remaking it, because this thing is like really, really, really wearing out and whatnot. It's very much showing its age. Like it's literally breaking apart at the sides there and whatnot. The paint itself is uh, coming off here and there. It's a little bit, it's worn. It's well worn, you could say since I've had this thing for seven years and wear it on like a near daily basis. So that's what'll, that's what'll happen. So I might make a new one, one of these days, but, but yeah, hello, hello, Ryu. If I'm saying that correctly, look at the drift blim and indeed, but yeah, so that's the story of this hat. That's the story of like the name of this channel, I guess. Hey, it's a freaking diamond one. Sweet, sweet man. But yeah, so when it comes to essentially from that whole ramble, when it comes to the name of Acoustic Harmonia giving like Pokemon Gen 5 vibes. That's actually exactly where it's from, essentially. And that's the whole, that's the whole story. That is the whole story of freaking the name of this channel and this hat and freaking all that fun stuff. 
did say it correctly. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. New record. Whoa. This one's going in the Guinness Book of World Records for Harmonia's course record for the whatever to hail. Fairy collector, which is a 10 species of fairy types. I don't even recall what fairy types were. There. Oh, I guess the Primarina. I think we got to get this to research level two and then we can uh, go after Manaphy. And my, not YouTube, YouTube thought you might like my stream in a stream. Nice, nice. Well, I'm glad that YouTube freaking thought that. I have thought about trying out like more YouTube streaming over, like I'm usually a Twitch streamer, usually. But I've thought about potentially trying out like more YouTube streaming here and there for many reasons. But one interesting thing, Bob, is YouTube actually has an algorithm that sometimes does stuff like that. Freaking Twitch is just weird and stuff. So, oh, there's a wing off. So I gotta ask, because I'm curious about how the freaking YouTube algorithm works. Is this a channel that you've been by before, seen some other stuff of, or is this your first time seeing the channel? Because there was a playthrough that I experimented with last year of Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 streaming on YouTube, and there was a couple people that came here that had never heard of my channel before, and I was like, really? YouTube recommended this without even like, seeing my stuff before. There were some people that were recommended my stream without ever even knowing what game I was playing. Like, they had never even heard of the game before, and I was like, really? YouTube recommended that? So I feel like I'm never gonna understand the YouTube algorithm. It's just always going to be weird and stuff. Played at some point in the past, apparently, but forgot. Okay, so maybe that might be a factor there. Maybe, maybe. Hey, look, another thing. There's another thing for Bob over there, so I'll smack a that. And apparently, I don't know if it needs to be research level 2, but I hear that makes that whale lord go underwater eventually, and then there's mana feet behind, but maybe it needs to be research level 2. Probably. Hmm. Because, you know, I'm always trying to figure out how the hell does this YouTube algorithm work anyway, you know? Because when I was doing Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 shenanigans last year, and some people were coming into my stream like, I've never heard of your channel or this game before, what's it about? I'd be like, oh... YouTube recommended this to your home page without, you know, like any of that. I need to switch over to this, sorry. Um, so, like, I'm never going to understand this algorithm. Trying to figure out when and why might it have been from a video essay. RCT, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Or a history of Pokemon on the Switch. Those are my big three right now. Should I, like... Come on, let's go faster and then we can maybe, uh... Ha! Ah, that one's got to be a good one, right? Basically, I think. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get this up to research level two, and then we'll probably be able to go after Manaphy and stuff like that. A pallet guide, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Way back when, I used to sometimes make guides for Dead by Daylight. Those days are long behind me nowadays, though. I... Those days are long behind me now. I already got a good Drifloom photo last time, but we're getting another one for funsies. This is what we're doing. Another one. Does going faster make you throw farther because velocity and stuff? It seems like it would. I don't think it does, but like, seems like it might. Okay, what's going on here anyway? Something might be under the thing is what's telling me. I don't understand what any of it means. But yeah, I... Let, no, let's go that way. Oh, I have to... Oh, I guess I have to... I guess scanning is what chooses the other path. But yeah, I've been streaming on Twitch for a long time, but I have debated about, like, switching over to being a YouTube streamer. I'm trying it out with a few different games this year. Like, first of all, Pokemon Snap. Um, in a couple of weeks' time, we are probably going to be doing some Skyward Sword HD on YouTube, since I already did the original game on freaking Twitch anyway, so may as well do that. And then when the freaking Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remasters come out, I'll probably do, like, one on YouTube and one on Twitch and see how I feel about the whole thing. So I'm like experimenting. This is the year of experimenting, seeing if I want to become a YouTube streamer instead of a Twitch streamer. Because the freaking YouTube channel is way bigger than the Twitch channel anyway. And, you know, as was being mentioned earlier this stream, there are some people who like don't have Twitch, but have YouTube and it could be a cool way to, you know, partake in the live streaming shenanigans and whatnot. So like, there's plenty of people that use YouTube that don't use Twitch. Um, my YouTube channel is way bigger than my Twitch channel. YouTube actually has algorithms to potentially recommend streaming to streams, but freaking YouTube's format is not as good. Like, it feels way more user-friendly on Twitch. I quite prefer, like, the whole chat and, like, streaming format there, I guess. But, like, hey, there you go. Isn't that neato? Isn't that neato? Um... 
And like with Twitch, it's a lot easier to meet other content creators out there through things like raids and hosts. Like it's a way more social platform to meet other people. So like both YouTube and Twitch have like their own ups and downs. I feel like if YouTube actually committed to like really, really flushing out its live stream service, it could kill other platforms like Twitch, considering, you know, everybody already goes to YouTube for pre-recorded content. Anybody that watches game live streams, maybe they'll go to Twitch, maybe they'll go to YouTube, maybe they used to go to Mixer before it got shut down, maybe they'll go to Facebook Live. Everybody has their own live stream platforms. But where does everybody go for pre-recorded content? YouTube. Everybody's here anyway. Everybody's already here anyway, so like, if YouTube actually committed to flushing out its live streaming service, then it could absolutely kill the other platforms, just because this is the platform that everybody shares anyway. But, I don't know, YouTube Live still feels like a weird side thing that like, not a lot of people do, or even know about, and it doesn't feel like super duper flushed out. Maybe that'll change eventually? Who knows? Yeah, Pokemon lost its magic. That's the one. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that one's been doing really well for itself lately. YouTube knows you don't like Star and Shield, I guess. Twitch is better streaming platform, but you use YouTube so much more. Yeah, at the end of the day, when it comes to, like, streaming, uh, the actual practice of streaming itself, look at that yelling uh, wingle over there. Um, when it comes to the actual practice of live streaming... Oh, wait, switch this. I think that Twitch is the better platform for that. But, everybody's on YouTube anyway. And it's a much more convenient platform since everybody's already on it anyway. And my freaking YouTube channel is way bigger than my Twitch channel. So, freaking, hey, well, slightly more points. It's basically the same photo. Is basically what that was. Cool, look, a one st Wow, dang, it's not even a diamond thing. Gosh darn it. We haven't even gotten a single photo that actually shows, like, Blastoise outside of its shell. Isn't that, isn't that wacky? But yeah, there's, the whole situation with Sword and Shield is, like, hella whack. Like, at the end of the day, I generally enjoyed those games. Like, when I did my full playthrough on this channel of Sword and Shield, I was saying throughout that, like, I was having fun and enjoying the game and whatnot. It's just the things in the background that, uh, weren't so good. Like, the unoptimization, cutting the national decks to make more money off of Pokemon Home because the technology was absolutely available to include every Pokemon. It wouldn't have taken any extra effort, really, at all, considering they could just import the same models from previous stuff as they have been for the past decade. Freaking not okay. Not okay. Like, so at the end of the day, it's like, I think that they're fun games, but I think that some of the practices that went behind to like, you know, making as much money off of them as possible and like really not optimizing it is kind of not so good, you know? But, you know, I like Sword and Shield. I just don't like the way that they're handled, if that makes sense. If that makes sense is, that's basically my take there. What do we got here? We are going to need a couple more stuff to get to research level two. So we'll get to research level two. Do the ting, and then we'll be on our merry way. Also, I'll, when it comes to me mentioning how I'm going to be trying the Diamond and Pearl remasters on this channel on YouTube slash Twitch later this year, a lot of people that saw that one video essay of mine and be like, why are you doing that? You just freaking expressed in that video that you're not looking forward to them at all and freaking have like a negative opinion of them. And it's like, yeah, I do. But, like, I'm still going to cover them on this channel and, uh, you know, do content creator stuff. If I wasn't a content creator, I wouldn't pick them up. I would probably still consider it just for the sake of, like, having that part of, like, the history of the series and whatnot. And yada yada. But, yeah, apparently something broke while you were trying to... While they were trying to import them. This is an excuse, though. Lay the squirrel in Nintendo's feet. Games you a substantive delay. I feel like it might be a more so Pokemon Company thing than... Can I get... Sweet! It might more so be a Pokemon company thing than a Nintendo thing. Considering you look at Nintendo's other franchises, like freaking Metroid Prime 4 that they restart development from the very beginning of. Freaking Breath of the Wild 2 where it's just like, oh, barely any news is getting out here and there even though people are in hot anticipation constantly. And they're like really taking their time with it and flushing out the original Breath of the Wild got like delayed twice was the thing. Maybe three times, I don't remember. It got... It was originally supposed to be a 2015 game, and then it freaking eventually became a 2017 game. Gosh darn, I don't know how to properly get that get that shot there. Um, freaking, you've got one main 3D Mario game per console. Freaking, we had Super Mario Odyssey and whatnot. There's not another 3D Mario game unless you count things like freaking, you know, 3D All-Stars or 3D World and stuff like that. 
There's freaking Metroid Dread that's coming out after however many years. Like, you look at Nintendo's other franchises, and it's like, holy crap. They're, like, taking their time with these things, apart from, like, scummy things like freaking 3D All-Stars and uh, Skyward Sword HD and freaking that whole fiasco that I'm actually working on a video essay on right now. Screw stuff like that. But generally, their next big titles is, like, you look at that, and it's like they're taking their time with it. Whereas the Pokemon Company feels very much like it's this kind of own entity like it is under like the same kind of helm of nintendo but it feels very much like they kind of do their own thing because i mean at the end of the day pokemon is the highest grossing media ip in the world considering you've got things like the video games the tcg the anime the merchandise all that freaking stuff like there is a lot that goes into pokemon for example is the thing so pokemon very much seems like it acts as its own entity in a way and i feel like the pokemon company kind of just does their own thing so when it comes to the whole state with modern pokemon i'd say that it's probably more so like decisions from the pokemon company rather than nintendo probably it's not like i know that's not like i know but if i had to guess just from looking at like nintendo's track record with like their other big games that they're like taking their time with and taking years to like get out there or as freaking pokemon's like no let's get a major title out there asap all the time it's like, okay, something's not adding up here, in my opinion. In my opinion. So I feel like it might be like their own entity kind of thing, Marbob. Yeah, let's go Diasway this time, is what we'll do. Apologies that I'm not, like, catching up on things in chat while I'm rambling. And also, now I gotta get a stupid Blastoise shot, is what I gotta do. Do I just gotta, like, smack you with apples until you get out of there? Whatever, I don't know. Um, hold on, I'll catch up on that stuff in a hot second. I gotta do photo snap and action real quick. Is what I gotta do. Hey, clam pearl. Bonk. No. You don't wanna come on out of there? <coughs> I'm allergic to drift blim. Holy heck. I'm so allergic to drift blim. Holy crap. What you wanna do, huh? Gosh darn it, there's things to like catch up on, but there's so many photos that I need to take at the same time. Bam, Lapras. Okay, that's probably enough photos here now. I don't think I'm gonna get any other shots. I don't think. But yeah, um... But yeah, Breath of the Wild 2's getting the Elden Ring treatment. What, where they take like a whole long time without like a whole lot of, whole lot of news and whatnot? I'm looking forward to... To Breath of the Wild too. I had such a love-hate relationship with Breath of the Wild, considering there's a three-hour video essay on my channel called Breath of the Wild is not a masterpiece, but it is something special. So I definitely have mixed feelings about Breath of the Wild. But I'm honestly looking forward to Breath of the Wild too and like breaking that game in half. Um But yeah. Um let's uh let's just see here. The reason you're getting so ready to blame Nintendo is that it's easily the most powerful entity involved and has massive cash reserves. Yeah, and I'm the next video essay that I'm working on right now is basically a criticism of Nintendo's classic games and how they're handling it. Like, the video essay that I'm working on right now, I'm calling Nintendo's classic game conundrum. And it's basically analyzing how Nintendo uses their oldest classic games, NES and SNES, to add value to their online service that barely works, so they can charge more for it and get away with it without, you know, their whole entire player base being like, this is such a ripoff because they divide their fans because some people are saying, oh, but it's worth it because there's classic games. And some people are saying it's not worth it. That's not what's going on here at all. Meanwhile, Nintendo just smiles happily at this divide that they created. And because the player base can't decide that it's inherently good or inherently bad, there's no reason to freaking change it because they created this divide using games that they've already had for like a couple decades now. And that's all it freaking took. So they use their freaking oldest classic games for that. And every classic game that is not NES or SNES, rather than making available on something like a virtual console and allowing their players to play the way that they want and where they want, like the whole motto of the Switch is supposed to be, they instead rather cherry pick them to potentially release at full price, like 3D All-Stars, like freaking Skyward Sword HD. And they swoop in like some great savior, like that classic game thirst that you've been having that was caused by us in the first place by not releasing this. Don't worry, you... Will sate that thirst of yours by swooping in to save the day with these classic games that we're releasing at full price that is literally no better than an emulated experience. That's that's basically the topic of the next video essay I'm working on right now. Um So yeah, there are definitely some practices at Nintendo that I'm not that I don't really like. 
and I think could be way better and is making it a bit hard to be a Nintendo fan sometimes. But but yeah, um, let's uh, let's see here. I teased the trailer, nothing else for a long time for Elden Ring and whatnot there. Um, Elden Ring looks good. It definitely looks intriguing. It definitely looks like a very intriguing game there. Um, and it's a little bit pretty bad about releasing old games of fun. Oh, <laughs> funny that that's what I was just talking about. And now that I'm catching up on chat and seeing that was great minds think alike, I guess. Um, but yeah. Oh, I got a request apparently. Look at that. Um, you have almost no interest in Breath of the Wild. I think that it's worthwhile for gameplay. But if it's a game that you ever go into, you have to have like no expectations from the story or music. Like the story of Breath of the Wild in my the short version of my three hour video essay when it comes to the story is like the story had potential. It had a lot of cool things going for it, but it freaking falls because you don't actually get to experience the story. The story in the here and now of Breath of the Wild is wakey wakey link and go screw up Ganon. The actual like story takes place like a hundred years before the events of the game. So you never actually get to experience the story playing out. Like the most unique thing about telling a story through a video game that is unlike any other format of storytelling out there is that the player's actions are directly responsible for making the story move forward, which is something that like no other storytelling format can do, you know? So that's something so unique about video games. But Breath of the Wild is just like, nah, let's throw that out the window. The player's actions aren't at all possible, aren't at all what comes into the freaking story playing out. The story already happened. You just get to listen to like chapter synopsises through these flashback memories that you can get from time to time. So, so that's why I don't like the story of Breath of the Wild. Um, like it had potential. It had a lot of things going for it, quite frankly, the story of that game. But like, you never get to experience it. You, you never get it. You never get the story. You get like freaking chapter synopsis through memory flashbacks. It's silly. <laughs> but that, that's my hot take on that. And the story just is you're non-existent. I think that Breath of the Wild is absolutely a worthwhile game in terms of like its gameplay and whatnot. I think its gameplay is fantastic. Like my goodness, it's an incredible gameplay game, but it's the kind of game that you have to go in without expectations for the story or the music. But it is worth it for the gameplay. That's my opinion. Um, but yeah, let's just see here. Um, when it comes to the releasing old games at full price, which is mass vast given that wages released in the United States have been stagnant for a long time. Yeah, Nintendo could have also blocked a release of an IP over which it has power on its own system, but did not intervene. And what? Well, hold on, let's just see here. Main issue with Breath of the Alliance is the over-reliance on light. Just severely about I like the art style of Breath of the Wild myself. I do like the art style of it. Since we lost a lot of the companies, but yeah, I, I definitely... Iwata did, like, so much for the company. He did so much for the gaming industry in general. Like, he was an absolute legend. But, you know, I mean, like, even during those times, Nintendo wasn't exactly completely holy. Like, completely no scummy business decisions made at, like, certain twists or turns. But, and there are definitely still titles that are released on the Switch to this day that are like, wow, that's absolutely incredible. Good job on, like, that team from Nintendo. But there's more and more titles that are like, really? Really gonna do me like that? 3D All-Stars, Nintendo Online, Pokemon Home, Skyward Sword HD. Skyward Sword's literally my favorite Zelda game, and I despise Skyward Sword HD. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like, it's it's been sketching me out more and more. As time's been going on. I would say rather buy an overpriced old GameCube or we just can pay full price for a decades old game. Yeah, that's understandable there. That is definitely understandable there. Or is you'd rather play games on PC by buying them off Steam or something, but Nintendo is dumb and doesn't do that and make their own PC store to release the games. Um, well, I honestly think that it's understandable Nintendo releasing stuff on their own console because one of the best ways that you sell consoles is through exclusives. That is one of the absolute best console selling thing Bobs is through your exclusive. So I think that that's understandable at least. But I do wish that they would branch out to freaking... Oh wow, that photo is apparently excellent. I do wish that they branch out to platforms like mobile more. In this video essay that I'm working on right now that I'm calling Nintendo's classic game conundrum. There, I have a section that's called like what I would do to change things and whatnot. And what I propose for like their classic games is basically have the virtual console on the Switch have it on mobile devices, have it on PC, have your purchases sync across devices, and you can basically like use your Switch, phone, PC as like classic gaming machines that like sync saves across the cloud. And that would like print money like crazy. And I don't know why they haven't done that yet. Probably because they're so anti-fun and they'd rather freaking not, you know, go to effort to do fun things and rather just make a quick buck off of 
easier things to make, like Skyward Sword HD or 3D All-Stars, rather than taking the time to do more fun things, you know? But, like, imagine. Like, remember how freaking crazy Pokemon Go was at launch? Imagine if people had a beast that they could play, like, classic Pokemon games up to, like, Generation 5 on their phones and, like, trade with, like, other people that had the same games on their phones. Like, that would be, like, another Pokemon Go fiasco all over again. It would be all over news networks. People would be losing their minds. There would be countless people that haven't played Pokemon in years but see that available and are like, wow, let's play some more Pokemon again because it's there and convenient and whatnot, you know? Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, see here. Um... Yeah, Nintendo wouldn't want to do that for, like, their consoles and whatnot. This is a giant business that's the nature of giant business to do sketchy things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now Microsoft and what's pushing the game industry forward, do you think? They're becoming a lot more consumer friendly? Hmm. I'm not- I haven't been following a whole lot of, like, Microsoft stuff, but it may be worth looking into some more. So apparently we can do things with, like, Manaphy here now. Think inclusive or dumb and anti-consumer? I think, yeah, hmm, I mean, it depends, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what my opinion on exclusives is, I don't know, um, but yeah, and welcome back, Guzma, and whatnot, um, and that's coming from someone whose favorite game is a PlayStation exclusive, but yeah, it does help with, like, competition and whatnot, and when it comes to competition, something that I really think should change is, like, the freaking fact that, you know, whoever owns, like, a platform basically has, like, a monopoly over the store there, like, freaking... You know, the whole situation with the Epic Games versus Apple fiasco slash versus Google, where it's like Apple charging 30% of like any sales made off of their app store and they have like the sole exclusive right to do that. And same with Google, 30%. Freaking Steam is 30%. Steam doesn't truly have a monopoly. There are like other things that you can like buy games from on PC. Like the Epic Games store, freaking, what are other game stores on PC? You play, uh, Origin. Gross. Um, but, like, Steam is so ingrained as, like, the main PC gaming platform that, like, you know, Valve basically has, like, a monopoly there and charging 30% on, like, any sales on that. It's like, holy crap. Talk about being able to, like, sit back and do next to nothing and just, like, print money for free. It's like, what the hell? I think that that is very much, like, anti-consumer and doesn't really promote competition when you know, companies basically have an exclusive store right over, like, their own devices or platforms, and you're like, yep, time to charge whatever the hell we want off of you selling off of our stuff. There's a Vaporeon! Adorable. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's just see stuff here. Do you think that'll be the last Snapstream or plan to do another one? This'll probably be the last Snapstream since I just wanted to, like, you know, uh, get the last legendary Pokemon stuff. So we're going for like mana fee right now. And apparently we got to light this thing up from what I hear to make the in case jump. Here we go. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? And then we have to hit like another crystal bloom down the ways a little bit is what we're going to have to do. Hi, Rachu. And the next time we hop into YouTube streaming, we'll probably be with Skyward Sword HD, which, as I was just mentioning, is another situation I don't really like, but I'm showcasing it on the channel for the sake of, like, showcasing it on the channel. It's gonna be the same deal with, like, the freaking Diamond and Pearl remasters. Like, even, like, I, I freaking hated 3D All-Stars when it came out, and I just showcased it on the channel for the sake of showcasing on the channel. And I hopped into it thinking I would hate it, and I was right, I did hate it! So, like, I gotta, I gotta showcase these things and confirm for myself whether or not I do hate it and freaking, you know, uh, basically be able to express my full opinions during that. Because we recently wrapped up our, like, Skyward Sword playthrough that we were doing for, like, a couple of years here recently with the whole Hero Mode Cabela's Rifle Remote Rifle Challenge thing where, Bob, that's one of the craziest challenges I've ever done on the channel, by the way. Look, they're holding a clamp roll. Um... So apparently Manaphy is back. Yeah, look at that. Manaphy, cool. Well, we got that. That's another legendary Pokemon down. Sweet. Um, but yeah, so... This will probably be the last Pokemon Snap stream on the channel. But this won't be the end of YouTube live streaming. We're probably going to... Hey, look, another villain. Uh, we're probably going to be back with more YouTube live streaming in a couple weeks time with Skyward Sword HD. Where I'm going to freaking lose my mind over how much I'm ticked off at my freaking favorite Zelda game being given such a treatment. <laughs> you know? Like, for the longest time, I thought if Skyward Sword came to the Switch, I'd be hyped as heck. I'm not hyped as heck. I'm absolutely not hyped as heck. Um, 
but yeah, let's uh, let's just see here. Gog is a really good store owned by CD Projekt. I don't, I think I've heard the name before, but it's not something I'm super familiar with. I don't think. Um, forgot the diamond and pearl things were a thing. Oh wait, uh, no one idea seemed to that kind of gouging. Yeah, it's gross. Gaming industry is massively underregulated to get away with things like microtransaction and loot crates. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there could definitely be way better regulations on the gaming industry in general. Like, especially considering the gaming industry is now bigger than music and movies combined. It's like, okay. And there's like crazy regulations on things like movies and music, but like not anywhere near the same kind of thing on gaming. Because freaking, even though gaming is as massive as it is, it's still not taken seriously in terms of a, it is more and more often being taken seriously as like a serious economic thing essentially but even though it's bigger than like movies and music combined that still hasn't really sunk in for a lot of people and uh made a lot of people realize that oh my goodness look how crazy this is for the economy you know like it is sinking in more and more all the time it seems like but but yeah, let's just see here. Hey, Diamond and Pearl. What? Diamond and Pearl are so good. So you're not feeling nostalgic. I think the art style is cute, but it's a pair of games you don't care. Did like Platinum, so if they're more akin to... Wait, didn't like Diamond and Pearl, but like Platinum? I mean, Diamond was my first main series Pokemon game that I ever played. Oh, I needed to go that way, didn't I? I guess we're going through this course again. We go that way. We hit all the Lapras with the Illumina Orbs, and then a freaking thing happens with Manaphy, I think, or something. Yeah, loot crates absolutely need to, need to go. Um, Art style is your biggest issue with the Diamond Pearl Remaster. My biggest issue is just that it's freaking just taking the same thing that's already been done was the thing. Like every previous uh, Pokemon remake has been like a new modern take on a classic title. Whereas the Diamond and Pearl Remasters are just like, yeah, let's just scale up what we already had and not like throw new things into the mix. Like with free, I guess I already have the freaking video essay on the subject with the with a dedicated thing for Bob, but it's just like, you look at something like Auras, for example, and whether you love or hate Mega Evolution, whether you love it or hate it, that doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, it was the main mechanic of Generation 6, and that game expanded on it. Like, it felt like the next natural title after X and Y. Like, it felt like the next main series game with so many more, like, with expanding on that, as well as new mechanics like the Delta episode, the Dexanav, freaking Latias, Latiosaur, every previous legendary Pokemon. Sweet, a whole bunch of sucky photos of Inke. Um, so whether you love or hate Auras, like, that doesn't freaking matter. The point is, the other Pokemon, 17. Oh, that's so close to Diamond, though. Um, it did still feel like the next natural title, you know? Like, it was the next natural thing after that, but... The Diamond and Pearl Remasters are not at all the next natural title after Sword and Shield. It doesn't expand, doesn't seem to expand on anything that freaking... Sword and Shield brings to the table, and a lot of people have commented on that one video essay of mine being like, you can't know that yet, we basically know nothing about it. But the thing is, you look at freaking something like Auras, and it's like, they were revealing like a trailer for that game every other week. You look at Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire trailer, and there's like a bazillion trailers out there, because they were so hyped about getting as much information out as they could. Like, here's a trailer for Latias Latiosaur, here's a trailer for Mega Evolution, here's an anime trailer for Mega Evolution, like they were trailers all over the yin yang as i found out when i was gathering footage for that video but freaking with the diamond pro remasters it's just like oh here's a reveal trailer and then it's just dead silent it's just dead silent there which seems to imply to me that there probably isn't a whole lot more for them to reveal and they'd rather just have it be like the reveal and then people will get hyped speculating things when really there isn't anything else coming to the table. Like you look at YouTube, the freaking big YouTubers that make like clickbaity thumbnails for that kind of thing, sweet. They are just like, what new mega evolutions are gonna be in the Diamond and Pearl remasters? How are we going to see Dynamaxing in the Diamond and Pearl remasters? How are the Diamond and Pearl remasters gonna expand on whatever the hell? And like all this speculation stuff with like clickbaity thumbnails that gets people hyped up for no reason. Meanwhile, freaking Nintendo slash the Pokemon company is just like, yeah, we don't actually have anything else to reveal. But thank goodness people are like speculating all this crazy nonsensical stuff to get them hyped about stuff that we don't actually have. So that's uh, <laughs> that's that's that. Um, yeah, let's just see here. Uh, oh, I need to catch up on a bunch of stuff. As far as regulations go, microtransactions need to be banned outright and loot crates classified as gambling. That yeah, I, I I can agree with that. Gaming is also a serious cultural thing. Feel like publishers have a moral imperative to keep the culture important works in print. Yeah, I was 
I was being told, I was talking to my parents the other day, and my mom was actually telling me she was listening to the radio and listening to somebody that was talking about his time as an esports commentator, where he was like commentating League of Legends that was getting, you know, literally millions of people like watching it. Like, there was like more people watching it than things like the Super Bowl, this massive tournament for like League. And it's like, holy crap, this is such like a. It is such a cultural thing at the end of the day. It's something that people absolutely gather around and is literally getting bigger than sports and it's crazy, you know? But, but yeah, later this year, I'll end up being a Skyward Sword HD and Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl. Yeah, my plan is, my plan is essentially to do Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, like each one on Twitch, one on YouTube and like see like what I think about them both essentially think about streaming on YouTube and think what well, I think about streaming on Twitch basically compare contrast how the two playthroughs go by streaming what's essentially the same game on both platforms and basically see which one I felt better about Twitch streaming or YouTube live streaming and maybe that'll tilt the balance for if I decide to like pursue YouTube streaming or Twitch streaming we'll see so that'll be my big experiment later this year and whatnot and here and there I've like experimented with some layouts for that kind of thing also I don't know which one would be on which platform I don't know whether I do brilliant diamond on this channel or on Twitch and like vice versa I was experimenting with some different layouts this was like the last thing i threw together this was like a month ago i haven't tried it in a while um i freaking i don't like it though i don't like this i want to i think i'm gonna take some time studying different layouts on youtube that people have done for things like i don't know nuzlocke stuff like that where they have like similar kind of layouts and whatnot i'm gonna study like various layouts across youtube most likely and layout designs for this kind of thing because like i love my pokemon platinum layout i do love that like this is great it's like top screen bottom screen down there and like the space is perfect i love my platinum layout but when you've got like a full 1080p hd game and i haven't done a layout that isn't like the full screen of the game in a very long time so like this is gonna take some experimenting i don't like how this one turned out I'm gonna have to do some experimenting like I feel like this one might have like it might have something going in terms of like the idea but I need to like experiment with it and whatnot so you know that'll happen eventually and whatnot um Diamond Pearl War in terms of story pacing optimization massive step down from Emerald Coliseum and Gale of Darkness it's funny I was in the I'm in like the age generation where most people of my age started out playing Pokemon with the Game Boy Advance games but I only got into gaming in general like a little bit later so my first game was Diamond but you know most people that I knew in like elementary school started out playing like Ruby Sapphire Emerald on their Game Boy Advances and whatnot but I only got into gaming a little bit later, so I I didn't get to experience those games in like their prime, and I'm a little bit I'm a little bit sad for that and whatnot. But I mean, what what does one ever expect like story from main series Pokemon? I guess like freaking unless it's Generation Five Black and White. Like there have been times like I mean the more recent games like Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield is like okay, there's something going on here in this story. Like they have something going. They're on the right track to potentially creating a cool story, but like. What the hell is even happening? Is uh is the is the real question, you know? But uh But yeah, as far as Sword and Shield go, if you put the National Dex and Mega slash Z moves back and dump Dynamax, it doesn't play too badly. I wasn't I wasn't that big of a enemy of Dynamax. I thought it was pretty alrighty. But I know that a lot of people didn't really like it that much. Connection Pokemon goes back to Gen 1. That's the way that it is for most of my cousins and whatnot. I'm the youngest in my generation and family of my family by a lot, by like over a decade. So like freaking all my all my cousins and stuff like that were like the original pokemon players and whatnot whereas i'm freaking i'm still a freaking youngster and whatnot i'm just 22 myself but uh forgot your biggest issue with the remasters that they outsource to the pokemon home people yeah that's a little bit sketchy there um let's just see here people are just doing that to hype up others for nothing and to get like sweet clickbaity ad revenue i guess most likely uh microsoft bought bethesda slash i knew that they bought bethesda i don't know what ninja theory is i don't know what double fine is i don't know which is what a sibian is now won't even come to sony slash nintendo even microsoft knows how to get calls to players by xbox to keep the industry healthy i knew they bought bethesda i don't know what the others are um but yeah let's see as far as i'm seriously pokemon goes let's be honest certain she'll feel pretty incomplete on many levels yeah i mean it's really crazy when you look at something like there was a meme that i put on my uh modern pokemon video essay that was like freaking it showed xenoblade chronicles 2 and showed that it was made by 40 developers and then it showed 
uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield looking not so good and showed 113, a team of 113. And I was like, wait, this meme that I have in my memes folder for like going live with like various games, is this really the case? And I looked into it and apparently Monolith Soft had like in total roughly a team of 100. They had 40 working on Breath of the Wild. They had 40 working on Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And then the other 20 were like just managing other misc stuff and like bouncing between like different things and whatnot. So you look at something like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is an absolutely beautiful world. Like, oh my goodness, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's crazy to look at that and be like, that was made by a development team of 40. And you look at something like freaking Sword and Shield. And I looked into it. I was like, staff of 113. I was like, okay, that can't all be developers and whatnot. And I looked into it and looked into how many how much staff on sword and shield was actual like development staff and it wasn't 113 but it was over 100 still and it's like oh 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 i have hold on i have some freaking thing robobs if i i always keep like a memes folder on my computer because i always post a meme in discord whenever i go live with any game is a thing so where is my freaking thing robob here so let's see here. There was one that I got a little while back that I thought was kind of interesting and also kind of sad. Where is it? Where is the thing that this one? This is the one that I'm looking for. This is the one that I'm looking for here. Um, so, uh, Yeah, um, about I'm usually not a huge stickler for graphics. I think that if a game is fun, if you got like a good story, some good music, or the gameplay is just like really fun, then like who cares about graphics? But if you're the highest grossing media IP in the world and you look like you're a game from like the GameCube era, then there's a problem. And then there's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, the top one was Genshin, is what it was. Like I typically don't care about graphics. But if you're the highest grossing media IP in the world, and your graphics suck, then there's a problem. Then there's absolutely a problem going on there, you know? Can I, uh... I don't know what I can do with that. But yeah, let's, uh... Let's just see here. You're old, like, still having a SNES from when it was current old. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I... I wish I could have gotten into gaming a little bit earlier. I would... That would have been around, like, uh... I guess... I mean, most of my friends, in terms of, like, consoles, started with, like, PlayStation 1. And, uh... I started with PS2 um, and like Game Boy Advance around that kind of era. Did they not jump? Apparently I need to, apparently I need to make the Inkay jump by hitting that. So I guess I'll retry. And then I got to hit like the other Crystal Blue or whatnot. Um, let's just see. Your first Pokemon game was Explosive Sky. and first main series game with Diamond. My first Pokemon game was Blue Rescue Team. And then I played like Explorers of Time from there. And Explorers is so good. I really hope that a Rescue Team DX comes out. And the fact that there's been like no news about that makes me get my hopes up that they're hopefully taking their time with it. I mean, as I mentioned in my uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon video essay from like forever ago, I do think that there's a decent chance of there being an Explorers DX. And I really, really hope I'm right about that. I very much hope. Well, something like that. Um... But yeah, think about Monolith is that they're the product of a person with a vision from back in the 90s. Xenoblade is an Echo of Xenosaga, which is an Echo of Xenogears. Yeah, and one of these days I want to play Xenosaga on this channel. Like, I've played Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 on this channel. I had briefly a series going on as with Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is like my second playthrough I ever did on this channel. But like, the quality was so bad that like, I deleted them from this channel and I never beat the playthrough. So, uh, they just exist on my computer now. And I figure if I ever do hop, like one of these days I'll finish off all of Xenoblade Chronicles on this channel by fully covering Xenoblade Chronicles X. But I would need to, uh, gosh darn, I missed that one, didn't I? But I need to start that playthrough through from the beginning. And then maybe those old episodes that only exist on my computer could be like bonus episodes at the end. But let me tell you, the quality is trash. It's probably better off that nobody gets to see them anyway. But, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, see here. Uh, it's an interesting rabbit hole if you care to explore. And I've seen some of the theories and whatnot of people, like, connecting. This whaler is not going under the water, but Manaphy's still, like, there and stuff, so that's cool. Um, I've seen some of the theories, like, connecting Xenogear, Xenosaga, and Xeno Xenoblade, where I think it's really cool that, you know, 
despite all the time that's passed, there's still like these kind of lore connections between these games. Like it's not like they're in the exact same universe. Like there's different names and whatnot across the different games, events being slightly different and whatnot. But Xenogears, Xenosaga, and Xenoblade are all still like interconnected through the same kind of lore. Not everything being like one for one across them all, but there's things that connect them all, even all the way up until, even even up to the freaking Xenoblade Chronicles X with the freaking thing where Bob with the light of life hold and the freaking biological weapons and stuff, which I think is so cool how that connects to the other ones and it makes me really really want to play Xenosaga and Xenogears. Because I want to see for myself exactly how they're connecting and point that out and be like, whoa, that's crazy, you know? But there's so many freaking games to cover on this channel all the time. But I will do that eventually. I don't know when it's going to be, but mark my words, I will cover those games eventually. It will happen. Might not be for a while, but it'll happen. More Dripplin photos, because whatever. Um, and most GameCube games look better than Sword and Shield? Yeah... I mean, in some ways, I do very much like the things like the character models in Sword and Shield, like the actual human models and whatnot. Like those things I like, and I like the, I mostly like the character customization. The fact that me playing as a dude, I can't like have like a long haired dude. The fact that in terms of hair options, playing as a female trainer can make my hair look more close to my actual hair than playing as the dude trainer. I don't like that, but, but for the most part, I like the character models. Sucks that I can't be a long-haired guy in the same way that I am, though. I think that's stupid. But, but apart from that... Okay, I gotta apparently hit all the Laprases with Illumina Orbs. Apparently. Let's just see here. So let me do the Xenoblade thing. What, play through the various games of that and whatnot? Uh, but yeah. Uh, play Zero is so weird, but so good. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. So I hit them all with Illumina Orbs. And apparently a thing happens with Manaphy or not. I guess it's because the whale lord didn't go under the water. I don't know, whatever. We got some Manaphy photos, I guess. So, like, whatever. Whatever, or something like that. But yeah, let's just see here for thing where Bob's there. Um, it gives me my end up hanging out for now. Stayed up all night to finish a three minute video, which I already uploaded as part 0 0.5, but you're exhausted right now. I'll be rested up to watch the rest of Vesperia stream later tonight. So, see y'all. Have a good one. All right, I appreciate yourself by hanging out, Guzma. I'll see you later with the Tales of Asperia stream that we'll be doing over on Twitch later tonight to wrap up that game and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I shall hold you to it. My game queue is freaking crazy, so it's not going to be for 3,000 years, but eventually. It might have to be like years down the line. Because my game queue, right now, I have a, uh, like currently ongoing on the channel, is Metopia, Tales of Asperia, which I hope to beat later tonight and have that done with. Fire Emblem Fates, New Pokemon Snap, which you're getting done with right now, and that'll be knocked off. Dark Deity, Age of Calamity's DLC that I finished up yesterday. So, like, not yesterday, a couple days ago. So, over the past few days, I'll have knocked off Age of Calamity's DLC, Tales of Asperia, and New Pokemon Snap, and it'll just be Miitopia, Dark Deity, and Fire Emblem Fates. But, tomorrow, Mario Golf is releasing, and I cover Nintendo things on this channel, so I'm freaking playing it. So, we're gonna have Mario Golf added out of nowhere. Um... Metroid Dread is releasing in October, so I wouldn't mind doing the other 2D Metroids first. So I'm gonna have my work cut out for me there. Um, there's things with the freaking Watch Dogs happening in the near future, so I'm gonna be doing stuff with that. There's Skyward Sword HD releasing in a few weeks' time that I'll be covering and whatnot. Oh, July, there's also Pokemon Unite. It doesn't actually have like a release date yet, but there's there's that. Um, I still have post-game stuff to wrap up in Pokemon Platinum before the Diamond and Pearl remasters release. Um, there's the Mario Rabbids sequel revealed for next year, so I'm gonna have to do the original first. Splatoon 3 is coming out next year, so I'm gonna be doing freaking 1 and 2 before then. My goodness gracious, so I have potentially, coming up here, like, even excluding new releases, I have potentially four Metroid games, Pokemon Platinum's post-game, Mario plus Rabbids, Splatoon 1 and 2, and freaking... Plus, like, all the new releases. I have this all on, like, the stream schedule. If anyone's wondering where I'm reading this off of, it's literally just the stream schedule channel of, uh, my Discord server and whatnot. And right now, it looks like I literally have freaking five daily uploads, which I know is probably shooting myself in the foot, like, in terms of the algorithm. But, like, my goodness. I can't help but do series on many different games and then skew up daily uploads for them all. So right now, there's daily uploads for Fire Emblem Fates, Tales of Asperia, Age of Calamity, Dark Souls, which I beat a while back, but I did so many parts that, like, it's still going for a few more days here, the daily uploads. Metopia, Dark Deity, and as of tomorrow, there's gonna be freaking Mario Golf. But, like, this is so many videos that, like, I mostly, I mostly put them on the channel for the sake of, like, 
having them archived and whatnot basically having like here's the history of me playing that game rather than like i don't want to use them to like spam people's subscription feeds because i think that's dumb so almost all my videos i'll like turn off this little checkbox that says publish to subscribers feed and notify subscribers so like either either it shows up on home pages or people never hear about it and that's fine with me i mostly use it as like a place to archive playthroughs and be like well here's a history of that because I've mentioned this before, but my, uh, before I was a content creator, why is that a three star and that's a four star? What the hell? Um, before I was a content creator, I used to hundred percent as many games as I could. And I used to keep like a list of games I 100 percented. Whereas nowadays, rather than hundred percent in games, my goal is to have like as many series of games done as possible. Because the dream is like, what if I'm streaming one day and somebody comes into my stream like, man, I'd really love to see you play like, I don't know, x game one day and i could be like i already did it you can find the playlist right here it's already done like that's the, that's the freaking dream have more cases where people want to see me cover a certain game and i can be like already did it it's already done we we're already there one step ahead already you know so that's that's basically what's going on there i guess or something so we're freaking decking that out and whatnot i have thought to like remedy the fact that it one of the reasons that i have thought about becoming a youtube streamer is it would fix the issue of me freaking uploading like crazy is the thing like if i became a youtube streamer and did all my playthroughs streaming on youtube that would fix the upload problem so that is like one of that is also another one of the reasons that i've thought about becoming a youtube streamer rather than a twitch streamer like that is definitely one advantage that you know um is a problem that only I'd have uploading too much. Um, but yeah, sometimes if like one series I think is really standout, like a really big release, then I'll be like, okay, that's the freaking series that gets its videos published to the subscriber feed for now. But like, I'll typically at most have like one playthrough, have its stuff being published to the subscribers feed at once. Right now, I think I have none. I think that none of my playthroughs right now are being published to the subscriber feed. But like sometimes if there's like a new big release, then I'll have that thing be published to the subscribers feed for a while. But that's basically that's basically my handle on that kind of stuff and whatnot. Um, let's just see here. So you know the hair is so limited, they should have a length slider or something. I know, right? You have an enviably long hair too, but I doesn't want to get that long. I should get it trimmed at some point. I have like split ends, but yeah, it uh it's certainly something. Um but yeah. Um, let's just see here. I have a bad hairline, so you shave with the size and just keep a giant mohawk. Try to customize that onto a trainer. Yeah, I feel like the customization could be, like, way better. Like, right at the end of Tales of Asperia and you haven't finished it. Yeah, I have one more session to do, which will probably be tonight. I guess we'll return to, return to camp. During May, I was like, okay, there have been a lot of crazy generous mad lads around this channel that have made a lot of this stuff possible through their, like, crazy generosity. That have made things possible, like, good cameras, nice lighting, a good microphone, freaking these lights around the room, a good streaming computer, a stream deck, like, all this freaking stuff that I use, a good capture card. Like, all this freaking stuff, the reason that I was able to pick it up was because of, like, crazy generous mad lads with their mad ladness so during the month of may i was like okay i'm going despite my crazy game schedule i'm going to start taking game requests where like each person that's been like a super crazy generous mad lad could give me a game request so we wound up playing dark souls from mortis was a thing and uh tales of asperia from guzma who just dipped out the mod right there and uh well my plan was like during the month uh, during the month of may is like i'll be doing these game requests and whatnot it's freaking, it's nearly July now, and I'm, and I still haven't beaten Tales of Vesperia. So, like, maybe I should have known what the hell I was getting myself into when it came to, uh, taking game requests. I should have anticipated I was gonna get some things that wound up taking me, like, 3,000 years. But, anyway, I picked it up for the month of May to be like, yeah, let's spend the month of May doing, like, a special celebration kind of thing for Bob there. And now, here I am, like, an extra month later, hopefully now about to finish it off and whatnot but yeah uh when you breathe never um you swear hearing splatoon 2 is just a remaster of splatoon 1 um and yeah never never breathe i recently hopped into splatoon 2 i've uh why am i on wi-fi i have my ethernet adapter plugged in it's not like it matters um so what's the next legendary pokemon that we have go at that we're going after i haven't played splatoon 2 in a couple of years 
But I'm starting to get a series underway called Creators Collide, where every episode is hopping into a game with a various co with different content creators out there, all while talking about their content creation journey, how long they've been doing it, what kind of stuff they make, yada yada. And one of the people I recently hopped into a recording session of that with was with Splatoon 2. So I've recorded three sessions so far. I did one in Pokemon Sword and Shield Dynamax Adventures. I did one in Minecraft, which I haven't played since like high school. And I did one in Splatoon 2. So that's going to take me a while to edit. Expect those like sometime next month, probably. It's going to take me a good while to edit. But but yeah, there's going to be a thing of Splatoon 2 on the channel here at some point that's been recorded. But it's going to take me 3,000 years to edit because I have a bazillion other things going on. I'm going to prioritize my video essay as well. I'm going to prioritize editing on this video essay because I want to release it on the day that Skyward Sword HD releases. So I have a little bit of a time limit. So we gotta prioritize that first, and then this freaking Creators Collide stuff is what I'll focus on after I'm done with the video essay, because that's a thing that has like a little bit of a time limit if I want to release it at like a time that would be really good for the algorithm. Like I released the How Pokemon Lost Its Magic thing where Bob at a time that, you know, the Diamond and Pearl remasters were trending, and I was like, okay, this is gonna be good for the algorithm, and it was right! So we'll see if I can make the right judgment again with uh, releasing Nintendo's classic game conundrum on a... Uh, on the day Skyward Sword HD releases. Yeah, I do a whole lot of uh, quick breaths in and whatnot, because I do a lot of rambling. This is what three years of doing this will do to you. So the next one that we have here is Jirachi. Jirachi can be found in the ruins. And the ruins are ruins of remembrance, apparently. So yeah, we don't need the Illumina spot. When you've beaten the game and start the level again, it will appear right at the start. Complete the game and it just cuts off. Wow, thanks, Serebi. When you're inside the ruins, you will find another Jirachi sitting on top of the purple pillar. If you hit it with two Illumina orbs, it will wake up and fly off to the left. If you then activate all the crystal blooms in the ruins, it will fly towards the pillar of light. If you play the music, Jirachi will start dancing around the pillar of light. Do it again, and it'll come to you, and you will have a magical wish which activates its four-star photo opportunity. What? Hawks, you're cheering bits in my freaking Twitch channel while I'm streaming on YouTube? Well, I appreciate the three bits regardless of seeing the alert box there, even though I'm not even on Twitch right now. Um, appreciate it regardless, you filthy memer. Um, so I guess it uh, it's appearing like right at the start, according to Serebi here? Apparently? Apparently. But, but yeah, there's my, there's my rambling on that. There's my rambling on that all. So I have a bunch of, not only do I have a bazillion games going on in this channel right now and coming up, but I have like three episodes of Creators Collide recorded that I'm gonna have to edit at some point. I have more sessions coming up to record with Creators Collide and I have a freaking video essay to create. Is the thing that I'm on a time limit for since I want to release it when Skyward Sword HD releases. So July 14th, hey look, Jirachi. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that just crazy? Wow, beautiful. Can I smack a Ryu again? Okay, well, there's Jirachi. See if you can cross the alert on stream. Yeah, I have the button here that like turns chat and the alert box on and off. That like whenever I'm streaming a video game that's like a kind of story video game, I'll turn off the alert box for, and the chat for like cutscenes and whatnot so it doesn't interrupt the cutscenes. And interestingly enough, that same like chat and alert box affects YouTube chat as well. So if I turn it on here, you hey look, it affects Twitch chat. Oh, that's interesting. So I guess the chat for like Streamlabs shows both my YouTube chat and Twitch chat. Cause you can see Hawks there with a VIP and the bit badge cheering three bits. That's interesting. Like I figured I'd turn it off for YouTube because the whole reason that I have like the chat on on my stream layouts anyway is so that when I archive my playthroughs on YouTube, anybody watching it on YouTube after the fact can see like what was being said in the chat and understand the conversation, you know? But on YouTube, you can see the chat replay anyway and know what the conversation is. So that's not a problem. So I don't need the chat on for like YouTube streaming stuff. Another reason why I could potentially move over to be a YouTube streamer rather than a Twitch streamer is I don't necessarily need to have chat on my layouts, but... It's not like chat on the layouts is a bad thing, but that's the reason that chat is on the layouts in the first place for Twitch is so that those watching on YouTube can still understand what the hell the conversation is and I don't look like a freaking maniac that's talking to myself. You know, I can convince people I'm not crazy after all, mostly. Or something. Ah, I don't know. Ah, dear. So apparently there's gonna be another Jirachi on top of a purple pillar. I don't see a purple pillar anywhere. 
So I don't know what the hell is going on here. I hear a thing, though. You're just pissed as hell over there. Um, but yeah, so... Can I smack a rude at? Maybe? But yeah, so the alert box in general is off because of, like, me having the chat off. Like, the same hotkey that turns the chat on and off is also assigned to the alert box. So anytime I press that button, it turns the chat and alert box on and off together. Because I figure, like, you know... Those are gonna be both the things that I turn, like, off for cutscenes. And whatnot, for, like, actual story games. So... I have my various hotkeys. I have one for this camera. I have one for chat and the thing where Bob. I have one for the doggy cam for when the doggy's around. I have one for muting my microphone like this. You can hear me talking when it's on, but then when I turn. So those are like my four main hotkeys that I have. Those are my four main hotkeys that I have. I guess I'll activate all the fluor. Hey, there you are. So apparently I got to hit you with like two of these. Cool. Why is the doggy cam still on? I left that on by accident. Gosh darn it. Doggy cam's only around like late at night when Doogie's down here. Hey. Hey, sweet. Look at that. What a well timed shot. Where are you going? What if I throw an apple? Bonk. You don't care, apparently. <laughs> Stop. I just imagined this BM saying, You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. Is there really not a crystal bloom around here for this one? Freaking go look out of the way. Out. Be gone. Will activating that do anything for me? Ha, I got it anyway. Get snippety sniped. What happens if I do the music box? Nothing happens. Oh, gosh darn it. Missed, missed the time for like an upside down shot, I guess. Gosh darn it. Cool. Throw it out there again. Ba bam. Cool. What's happening here? So apparently if I like activate all the things, a thing will happen with Jirachi. Does that one not get activated? Does it just not happen? So yeah, yeah. What's happened with Jirachi, huh? Where did Jirachi go? Jirachi's just chilling over there. Wow, I sniped the Golurk. Apparently, I snippy sniped the Golurk. Trained U.S. sniper. 300 confirmed kills. Jirachi's just chilling over there. I keep smacking that Golurk, it seems. Well, we got our Jirachi shots, though. Probably didn't manage to get a four-star Jirachi shot or anything like that, but we did get our Jirachi shots. We did indeed do that. They're just not done till you get back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kiddo. I need to keep remembering to, like, switch between these layouts for, like, the screen here so I don't, like, block the numbers. And whatnot. I wish the screen was less bright so it stopped flashbanging me every time that screen came up and whatnot. Well? What do you think here, Professor? What, really? You want that one the most? That one's a three-star, apparently. It's a pretty sucky three-star, so maybe I'd go with, like, a different one here. We gotta have some better one, right? Hmm. Like, that one's gotta be pretty darn good, though, right? We can get the three-star probably pretty easily if I ever want it. Right. See what we've got. El Ligos, what do you think? Wow, it sucks. How is that one on the left not a diamond one? How is it not? Like, this one's gotta be great for other Pokemon in the shot and, like, all that fun stuff. Yeah, look at that diamond. Sweet. Sweet, man. Cool, we got our Noivern thing where Bob complete without diamond, but it's still complete. New record there. New record! Okay, well, I guess we're yoinking that one. I guess that's what's going on here. It seems like. So, what do we got? Max level! Is that our first bit that we've gotten to max level? Is that our first research area? I think. Course scored, not gonna be all that good. Not even up to a million. New record. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Record, record, whatever. Whatever the hell. You got a research sticker. Registered every species of Pokemon and Aura Silent to your photo decks. Oh, cool. Oh, there's stickers that go on the... That's new. It's every Pokemon and Aura's Island. Well done. The very history of Lentil lies sleeping in those ruins. So I guess whenever you get all the photos of a Pokemon in like an area, it, it'll 
do that, I guess. Fledging Researcher. Max out your research level in one course. Huh. So you have the research title, Fledging Researcher. Huh. Interesting. Also, I gotta respond to, like, a text here really quick, so give me a hot second. This is what I better do. So, let me just respond to something here really quickly. There we go. Respond to that. So, we've gotten two legendary Pokemon photographed this stream in a stream. How many do we have left? How many legendary Pokemon are left here? So, apparently we have just Shaman and Deansi, it looks like. And then we should have photographed all the legendary Pokemon. So, apparently. Let's go after Shaman next. Is what we'll do. Thank you. And apparently. Apparently... Florio Nature Park day and night is when Shaman appears. Apparently. Shaman can be found in the park day. It can be found towards the end, hidden amongst the flowers in level 3. I have this at level 2. Gosh darn it. If you manage to bring Pichu, Scorbunny, and Garuki to the end, you'll be able to get a special interaction where they all gather by the final crystal bloom. It's also asleep in the middle area in level 2. Oh, so we can still get it then. Um, apparently. In Park Night, you can be found at the start in level 3 watching Score Bunny. Huh. In the Illumina spot stage, Shaman can be found on top of a cliff. If you time it right and photograph them talking, Shaman will ride on Meganium's head. Huh. That's certainly something. Also, I got a follow-up reply to a thing for Bob here. That's what I'll that's what I'll do. Cool. So Apparently towards the end of the course, but only on like level three. Hold on. It's hidden towards the end in level three. And uh, it's also asleep in the middle area in level two. So we're at level two right now. We may need to get some photos to get up to level three over here. May well be the case. Is what things are seeming like. So. So. I'll see if I can get a shot in the middle in level 2 here. Might discover something new here. Might just do. Ha! Ha, ah, how's it going? That one's pretty good, right? That one's gotta be a pretty darn good photo. Most likely. I sure hope. Where did that Grookey and Pichu go? Pichu, Pichu? Um... Can we do something about Dodrio? Maybe. Wanna well, look this way? Ah! Whoa! That's gotta be a pretty darn good one, right? I hope. So yeah, we'll definitely get our level up around here, I hope. Bidoof. Our lord and savior, Bidoof. Asleep in the middle area in level two, huh? Like, that's probably gotta count as like the beginning area, right? Some charred fruits. Did a Pokemon do this? Can I do anything about the thing happen? Oh, Mulga! Nice. Like, that's gotta be pretty darn good, right? Wurmple. Wurmple. Oh, Wurmple, no! So this up here has gotta be like the middle area in a hot sec, right? I hope. I think it's during the night that a pincer goes there. I think. Oh! Mulga. Mkai. Mkai. What happens if I throw a thing? You want the thing? Take it! Hmm. Hmm. There's no Drea running across the thing, Rob. So this has gotta be the middle area, right? Asleep in the middle area in level two. Huh? But where? I assume some more hot, hard to spot, hot to spot. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say, hot to spot. That's de oh, right there. But Pichu first. Gosh darn it, Pichu, no. Get back here. Look, Shaman. Shaman there. How adorable. Oh, so cute. Oh, so cute. Well, that's Shaman. That Shaman wouldn't hurt to try a scan. Or what? What the hell do you want me to scan here? 
This fruit grows in lentil tangrowth. Love them? Can I knock it down? No? Do I hear a tangrowth? Oh, hi. Hi there. Sure, that. Badoof. Oh, so cute. Oh, such a cute Badoof. Yeah, yeah, Hoodoo's passed the hail out. Coming home and drunk again, back to his Hoodoo family. And whatnot. Oh, there, I just saw Shaman running by. I just saw that. But I kind of missed my opportunity for, uh, for that there. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. So Shaman ran through here. But is Shaman actually going to be over here? Maybe. Maybe maybe I missed my chance for a wave there. Like, okay, Shaman is here. It doesn't even need to be level 3. Shaman is still indeed here. Is there any way I can get them over? I don't know how I get them over to Shaman over there. Look how adorable. Oh, what if I activate the Crystal Bloom? Whoa! Whoa! Where are you going? So cute! So cute, though! Oh? Activate that Crystal Bloom? Oh, I'm freaking... I didn't realize I was so close to the end there. Well, well we got some good Shaman shots, though, right? We got some good Shaman shots, I think I should hope. Most likely. Got some good photos there and whatnot. Hi, silly doggy. You've come down to come see me? Hey? Wow. Hi. Well, let's move the doggy cam. Something like that. Hi. Hi. Oh, doggy. Oh, doggy. Hey. Oh. Oh. Over here. Over here, Jesse. Hey. Hey, how are you? Hey? <laughs> you came down to come see me? Hey? <laughs> hey? Alright, well, what photos do we have here? Let's see. I want this one? Because that one was a three star, apparently. But, like, we'll probably get, like, a better, different one. Because the three star kind of sucks. We want to go with the three star. Gosh darn it. Whatever. Whatever. I guess we're going with that. Hey. Let's do this. <laughs> and check these photos. Buffalon. That's a three star. I wonder what you do for a four star for Buffalon. At least it's a diamond thing. At least there's that. Oh, we got a four star to Drio. Doing the jump up. Oh, come on. Ah. It pains me. Oh, that was a good Amolga photo, though. That was a good one. Wurmple. What'd you think about Wurmple? Oh, my Wurmple photo kind of sucks. Kind of sucks, though. Man, that one's better, but it's not diamond, so it sucks. Anything that isn't diamond sucks. Yeah, we kind of got you mid-jump, but, like, you're kind of blocked by flowers and whatnot. Oh, that's diamond anyway. Oh. Okay, well, I'm glad. Look! Look how cute that is! Look how cute that is! Oh, is that our first one above 5,000 there? Look at the beetoofs! Oh my good gracious! Oh! You'll love to see it. Okay, we got a really good one there. New two star Talo. Crystal Bloom. We have like an edge of shaman in that shot. This one. That looks like a freaking desktop background, is what that left one looks like, honestly. Is what it kind of seems like. How many points did we gain that time? A decent bit. Not enough to get to level 3, but apparently we didn't even need to get to level 3 for Shaman. We were A-OK. -okay. New record! Sweet. Sweet, man. So apparently we have one more legendary Pokemon to go. Moment of calm. We registered a total of 150 photos with a 1 star rating to your photo decks. Okay, so we have Juan, Juan more to go. That's what I, what I should do. Also, I gotta respond to a text here again. I apologize that this is happening. I'm a genius photographer.
Okay, that should be properly replied to. So then, let's see here. The last legendary that we have not yet snapped a photo of is apparently Deonce. Or Deonce, I don't know how it's pronounced. Which is, there's an area here that we never did. So maybe we'll actually do that before we wrap things up properly. And Deonce's in cave. Out away cave? This probably? Yeah, cave. Alrighty, let's see here. Deonce can be found in cave in level 3. Gosh darn, I'm not level 3 here yet. Uh, when you move down to the alternate path. You'll find Carpic and Mawile on the ground. Throw Illumina orbs at them and Deonce will appear. Throw another at it and it'll put on a show for 2, 3, and 4 star photo opportunities. Welp. Guess we're getting this up to level 3 first and foremost. Is what's going on. Guess that's what we do first. Foist and foremost. Is what we better do. So we gotta get some good photos here. Let's get some good snapshots. Is what we do. So, it's just a hunch, but you'll find something new. Crow Batman! Crow Batman! Whoa, this Joltek jumped and whatnot. Um. Hmm. Carbink. Cool. It's gotta be pretty alrighty, right? I don't know. I don't know, sure, Joltik shots, I guess. The hell is going on over here, huh? The hell's that? Oh, that's certainly something, isn't it? That's gotta be a good photo, right? I hope. Got a Gengar doing Gengar things or something. Come on. Gosh darn it, I missed. Gosh darn it. Can I, like... Oop. Are things happening? Nice. Sure. I swear, it feels like this music box like rarely ever does things. Is what it certainly feels like. Hi! I guess I gotta be pretty good, right? Come on. You could have gotten that shot. Yeah, right, kiddo. Before you can get on my level, nerd. Something. I don't know. Got a Glalie over here. Can I... Do things here? You want to face this way? Oh, I thought your face was the other way, honestly. Well, I kind of expected. What's going on over here, huh? Guess maybe I should have done that earlier. There's no way I can hit that, right? Whoa! First try! Sweet. Really nailed the timing on that one. Did I now? Are you sure about that? Hmm. What are these sounds I'm hearing around me? Hi, Rampardos. That's gotta be a pretty darn good shot, right? Oh, the sounds I'm hearing are crow gunks, I think. A crow gunk. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Geodude? What do you want me to analyze, huh? Still like it looks like it's ready to fall at any moment? Want me to knock it down? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do here, huh? I don't know. I don't know what it wants me to do with that. Um, we got some very crazy crystal cave shenanigans going on over here. It seems like. Very crazy things. I'll speed up a little bit. Save a lie. Seems if I bonk one with an apple. Or a fluff root, as they're called here. I don't know why they're not just called apples. I don't know why. I'll smackaroo you. Smackaroo the Mawile, I guess. Sure, that's gotta be pretty good, right? Probably. Is that too much of the photo there? I don't know. I don't know. Paint me like one of your French Sableye. That's gotta be good, right? Probably, I hope. Never even saw the option for an alternate path on DS. Never gave me the prompt, I don't think. 
I had the option to photograph something for a hot second there. What was it? It was the villains and whatnot. Noibats. What's going on over here, huh? What's going on over here? Is the question of the day. Guess that's the end of the course over that way. Is there anything that I can do here that's particularly spicy spice? What? What is it? What do you want me to analyze, huh? What? This? I'm still gonna have a warm glow. Maybe this is why plants can grow here? All right. Maybe, maybe? I don't know. I don't know these things about stuff and junk. Why you ask me? Why that? Well? How was it? Sure. Let's see. Let's see here, Autodius. Cool. So this should get us up to the level 3 we need, right? I hope. I hope this gets us up to the level 3 we need. Got to be a much better shot there. Uh, gosh darn it. <laughs> okay, better Joltik score at least. I mean, Gengar. Dang it, that's not even a freaking diamond thing. Arr! New Noibat. Apparently. Glalie. What's this one? That's a two. No diamonds. Man, my photos suck. My photos really suck. I selected that one. Dang, I should have manually selected there on Paras one because I saw one there that should have been real good. Okay, finally, a good Crobat one at least. At least we got a good Crobat, man. Man, Sableye. What you think? Okay, it's a bit better, but... If it's not diamond, it sucks. <laughs> that is the rule of thumb. If it's not diamond, it inherently sucks. We should get up to level three. Yes. Hey, yes! Wonderful. Amazing, your research on this course is going great. Make sure you're being thorough with other areas too. I just got to this area. This is like my first round through here this session. What do you mean make sure I'm being thorough with other areas? Is that a genuine concern? My goodness, what have we here, huh? A research at cave reached level three. Sweet. So now we're gonna have to go hop back into it, this time specifically with level three. So if I have if I have a look at Serbi over here. Nothing can be found in the cave in level three when you move down to the alternate path. You'll find Carpic and Mawile on the ground. Throw luminorbs Lumina orbs at them and Deyonce will appear. And then like throw more. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I will certainly try. So now we can do level three. Now we can do level three here and see what's going on. See what's happening over here. Todd's tips with friends. Look for behaviors that Pokemon only show when they're with friends. So apparently once we start going down an alternate path, we're just going to, uh, oh. No, I wanted the freaking, gosh darn it. There's a Bunkaboo over there. How do I, uh... There, will I get a photo of you for the first time? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. What's going on over here, huh? What is happening here? Something happen if I smack all three of them with this? Nope. Guess not. It was worth a try. It was worth a try, though. That's, That's got to be better than my other one. I hope, right? I hope. Hmm. Hmm. What are we doing here, huh? I can't aim down any more than that, apparently. Apparently, I just cannot. Like, this has got to be better than my other one that was that, right? That's, like, way closer and way better, right? I hope you always get the best shots or something. Yeah, I got, we got a Braviary over there, the most patriotic Pokemon of all. Patriotism. Hi, Drygon. Got a shot of you just because, like, you're new and whatnot. Are there other ones? Those are annoy bats and whatnot. Hmm. How do you get a good Hydreigon shot, though? Oh, Clefairy! 
There's a Clefairy there. Well, dang, I could have potentially gotten it with Gengar, but a little bit late now. A little bit late now, I suppose. Sure, I don't know. Can I smack a root at? Whoa, my thing about just despawned. My orb didn't explode or anything. Sure, man. Krogungs are being noisy as heck again. Oh? That one's gotta be a good one, right? That's gotta be pretty darn good. I thought that stalactite was like a weird corn on the cob thing for Bob at first. Wait, so how do I... Can I not go down that path? Which way is the alternate path? I'm going down this one now. I never had any say in the matter, apparently. Because apparently I gotta go down some alternate path for the Dion save thing. But... Is the alternate path that one? Because I remember there being a Mawile that way, on level 2 at least. Apparently there will be a Mawile and a Carbink on the ground down the alternate path, and I think I took the regular path. I think. Most likely. Want a thing? Maybe. Bonk. Want some things? What can I do to make you do things? Whoa, snippity sniped! So sniped. Okay. The fairies are pretty hyped as well. But I'm a bit far for them now. Is the thing. A little bit far now. Sure. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. Ooh, the textures are uh, not the best up close. Right here, at least. A little bit gross looking there, but that's okay. Oh, Gengar. What you doing over there, man? Hydreigon's still here. I don't know how to get Hydreigon to, like, turn towards me. I don't know how to do it. Hydreigon sign won't notice me. So, I do this and Gengar pops out and maybe that's what gets Ramparters to ram the... Wall? Maybe? Maybe? Yeah, I remember the Rampart was ramming this wall once. Right? It's time. Come on! Come on, please! Fruit! You want fruit? What do you want from me? What you want, huh? Guess we're not getting that ram again. We're never getting that again. I don't know. I don't know. I hate how it teleports you away like a smidge before you actually make it to the thing. Instead of right when you make it to the thing. Gosh darn it. But this should get us enough points to... Wait, we were already at level 3. I just need to go down the other path. I'm already at level 3. What the hell am I talking about enough points to get up to level 3? We're already there, I'm fairly certain. There's gotta be other places that you can get Punkaboos and you need the like 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star if you want to 100% the game and whatnot, you know? But at least we got a Punkaboo shot. At least we got that. Okay. Gengar. Boop. Complete. Cool. Way up. All my carving photos suck. They all suck is the thing. Yep, that photo sucks. No big surprise. Well, that one's slightly better, so I guess I'll take that. A fairy, cool. What's that? A three-star one, apparently. Not the best photo, but... Uh, how do you get an actual good shot of that? How do you do it? What's this gonna be? A three-star one, apparently. Ooh, lots of points on that one. Compardos. Cool. That's another good one. Another sh nice one. But we need that Deonce. We need that Deonce photo is what we need. Is the thing. So, I mean... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever. What's this? Huh? Flying photographer, you showed the professor one photo each of 25 species of Pokemon flying. Ghost collector, register 10 species of ghost type Pokemon to your photo decks. Lentil student, I didn't- I pressed A way too early. Ghost collector. Okay. So. Deonce. Deonce, though. Pokemon Professor active in Lentil. 
So we need to go down this alternate path. I don't recall ever having the option to go down that other path. Like, do I just be facing that way and that's the path that will, like, go down or something? Maybe, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work. Sure. Sure, now let's be on our merry way. We'll zip and zoom. And we'll try to see if we can go down that alternate path. Maybe, maybe. I didn't get that better photo before because, uh, you know, it replaced, it did the freaking one star thing where Bob says I didn't have one of those yet. I'll try that again with that there. Alright, taking some braviary photos apparently. Apparently. What do you think? What do you think, Clefairy, huh? Wanna do your thing? Yeah, that. Cool. Well, let's keep going. And try to get us down this path. That path. Come on. Come on. That way. That way. Ah, yes. I had to analyze that. Okay. So this is the way that we go down. And there's apparently going to be like a mawile on a carbink on the ground. That I'm going to need to smack a roo with Illumina orbs. Apparently. What? It's about ready to come down at any time. Looks about ready to fall at any moment. Oh. Oh. I just need to smack it with two apples. What did that do, though? What did that do, though? That has to have done something. Oh! Hi! I mean... Hi? I don't know. Whoa! Gosh darn it, I missed my chance for that, didn't I? Gosh darn it. So there's a car bank and mawile on the ground. Get out of the way, Drifloon! I gotta hit them with Illumina orbs, apparently. Like that? And then, hey! There we go! And just like that, we've now photographed each legendary Pokemon in this game. Beautiful! Wow! Yes! 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 That now makes every legendary Pokemon in this game photographed. What do you want me to analyze, huh? What is it? What do you want from me? What is this? My well, seems less wary of you now. Perhaps it will let you through. Oh? There's like another path here? Seems less wary of me now. Is Yance coming along? I guess Yance is just chilling over there. We got our good shots, though. Now we can Did you get it? Oh, so there's gonna be other new stuff? It seems like. Other new things over here? It's just another Mawile. Hmm, a while. I don't know. I don't know. It's gotta be like a Galvantula somewhere or something, right? Probably. Or Punkaboos. Do a Pokemon live on the other side of this wall? Haven't seen anything new yet. What the hell is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Almost done. Oh, I don't know what the hell that is. Why can't I move my cursor down anymore? Ah, I wish I could aim down more. The hell? What is this? My electricity card charged Pokemon fur is sticking out here. Uh. What? Is, what do I do with that? What the hell? This is not done till they get back. So like right now. Gosh darn it. Well, well, I mean, hmm, hmm, but that will have been every legendary Pokemon photograph. Do you photograph new Pokemon? Can't wait to see. So I assume I'm going to get like some sort of a thing for photographing each legendary Pokemon, right? There's gotta be a thing that I get for that. There's no way there's not. Joltik. A uh, four star thing we're about. Can barely even see him there though. <laughs> As a thing. Okay, good. Got the diamond for that one. Yes. Yes, good. Good, good, good. Braviary. Yeah, I know my photo there sucks. I know. Oh, man. A diamond. Or anything like that. Geodude. Sweet. Got a diamond Geodude. Punkaboo. Three star Punkaboo. Wait. Oh, it was that one. Just barely got you in the shot there. Deontay. Yes. 
Our final legendary Pokemon to photograph. Yes, yes, four star. Look at that. Is that our highest freaking scored photo so far? I don't know. We had one that was over 5,000 way earlier. We had one that was pretty darn good from way earlier. I do recall. Well. Well. What have we here? It's not going to be enough. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. A bit a bit more needed there. Yeah, I do not care about the course score at all. Do not care one bit. All right. So then, flowers deep underground. Discovered around an outerway cave that leads beyond the wall into the cave depths. A profile icon. Receive the research title, flowers deep underground. Really? There isn't a thing for, like, photographing each legendary Pokemon? Let me double check that I got them all. So there's Mew. Suicune, Lugia, Ho-Oh, Celebi, Jirachi, Manaphy, Shaman, Xerneas, Deonce. Yeah, so we should have them all. Should have them all. I'm a little bit disappointed that there isn't a thing for photographing them all. I'm a little bit disappointed about that, quite frankly. But yeah, before we do wrap things up, though, there's a thing here that I apparently haven't done yet. We haven't done Beach Night at all yet, so let's do Beach Night. Because we haven't done that at all. Because this might be the final Pokemon Snap stream. I mean, if randomly I feel like streaming some new Pokemon Snap at some point, I will just hop into another stream of new Pokemon Snap. If I just randomly get the urge, I will hop into it. I will do it, mark my words. But, but we have a bunch of other games to do. So this might well be our final new Pokemon Snap. Stream in a stream. May well be. My thoughts on the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl art cover? It's weird. It's freaking strange. Every other art cover has been... Every other main series Pokemon art cover has been like an anime art cover. Whereas the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl one is just like, nah, let's just use like actual 3D models. It makes it feel weird. And like, out of place. I mean, that entire game feels weird and out of place, so... I guess it's fitting. <laughs> So that that's my that's my opinion on that. It's like something something's different here. So that that's my thoughts on that. What do you think, Executor? What do you think? <laughs> Smack dab in the middle. Zangoose. <laughs> Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Well that Zangoose is probably thinking. <laughs> Some random guy is pelting me in the back with apples. Welp. But yeah, uh, wait, what does it want me to analyze? Funny how Dialga and Polyke are screaming for no reasons. Like, I can freaking... I think that the idea of... Oh, it's a Viper. I think that the idea of, like, having legendary Pokemon roaring on, like, a box art could be kind of cool. But, like, the fact that it's just 3D models instead of, like, the anime thing, like, every other main series Pokemon game ever has been, is just weird and out of place. It's just a little bit odd NK, you want to look this way maybe oh munch it crunch crunch munch munch yes good good yes what does it want me to analyze what does it want me to analyze here what is it I can go this way apparently um <laughs> Magikarp is just past the hell out um Corsola hi Corsola how are you doing How's it going? Zangoose there just pondering. Oh, a Marini. Seems like we've got some blossoms over here that are just chilling. Cool. What happens if I play the music? This music sucks, by the way. <laughs> My goodness. How to torture somebody just play that music on like a 10 hour loop? I don't even want to get. Don't even want to think about that. I don't think. I don't even want to think about that. Does that do anything? No, maybe not. Maybe not. Got an artillery over there. Inkay. What you think, Inkay? Yes, come right close. Oh, gosh, whatever. Gosh, darn it. So these are going to be sandy ghasts, yeah. Bonk. Can we get you up and at him? Up and at him. It's morning. Sure, that, I guess. We got Raichu over there, who's doing some surfs up. 
kind of stuff. So Octillery isn't too impressed about- Ah! Ah! Gosh darn it. Whatever. Artillery wasn't too impressed about that Sandy Ghast. I thought that on the ground might have been something for a hot second. Artillery's just chilling down there now. Seems like. You like apples, by the way? Fluff fruits. By chance. Gosh darn it. You're not facing this way. That's a happy Sandy Ghast. That's a happy one. I don't think there's any other photos that we're going to be getting here. Random photos of the sky! <laughs> Random shots real quick. Don't mind me. Just regular daily kind of kind of stuff. Well, I guess that's our last course that we never... I could always try the other route. Maybe I'll do that like really quickly. For the sake of things. Maybe I'll do that real quick. Yeah, sure. Auto. Let's show the professor. Let's show the professor exactly what photos we got here. That's what we shall do. Zangus! What do you think of my Zangus? It's not facing the camera or anything like that. Dang it. Dang it, man. Oh, sweet. A two... Not two star. A diamond one. That's what I wanted to say. That's gotta be a good survivor shot, right? Nice work. Eh. <laughs> eh. Nice work. I don't know. That's darn it. Never gonna get a diamond in K. Okay? Never happening. Slightly better Puku Muku. Such a fun name to say. Corsola ones all suck. Marini ones all suck. But Blossom. That one sucks, really? Anything that isn't diamond sucks. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's good if it's diamond. If it's not diamond, it sucks. This is my rule of thumb. Well, I guess we're grabbing that one. Dang it. Dang it. Well, we tried. Well, an effort was made. An attempt was made, at least. Boop. Well, level one there, because it's our first time doing that course. Yeah, maybe we'll try that course again and try, like, the other route. A new record! Exactly what I needed. What is... I've got a research sticker. Registered every species of Pokemon on and around Maricopia Islands. Uh, that's your photo decks. Okay, so yeah, I guess there is, like, a thing where Bob for each Pokemon. I am... I am kind of tempted to just see, like, what Pokemon I'm missing in general in the photo decks and get, like, those stickers. I'm almost tempted. Almost. But, I think this time we're just going to go do the other route here. We'll wrap things up. If I do feel like hopping into another new Pokemon Snap stream in a stream in the future, I will. So, like, I'm not going to say, like, this is guaranteed where things are, like, ending off or whatnot. If I feel like doing another... I'll do another, if I feel like it. Like, the whole reason I do this channel at all is for fun. This is the thing. Let's go places. We got places to be. Oop, sure. But. But, but, but. This is going to be, like, the last guaranteed stream, I guess. This is what it is. Wait, I need a one-star executor, don't I? So maybe this'll be that. Maybe, maybe. Wait for it to go out a little bit more. So something like this would probably be a pretty good one star. Probably. I would assume. What? Yeah, yeah, there's a, a blade is being sharpened. Ah, Sviper. How's it going? Okay, see ya. Okay, bye. So, let's go down this other path this time, is what we'll do. But yeah, so, this may be the end of New Pokemon Snap, but it will not be the end of a Stream a Stream on YouTube, because as I was mentioning earlier, this Stream a Stream, um, the next playthrough that we- yeah, so I guess we'll just automatically go this away. Uh, in a little while's time, we are likely going to be hopping into some Skyward Sword HD with YouTube live streaming stuff. Most likely. So we will be back streaming, streaming on YouTube in the near future here. But in the meantime, I stream on Twitch like more days than I don't. I really need to figure out a proper schedule. <laughs> I really need to figure out a proper schedule one of these days. But I am streaming on Twitch more days than more days than not. So we are still doing plenty of streams, even if they're not YouTube streams. Is the thing. 
What you think, Octillery? Whoa! Did I miss the chance for that? Whatever. I don't even know. What's going on over here, huh? Doing a little bit of a show? <laughs> What's happening here? Bonk. Bonk. Well? I hear some other sounds. I guess it's just artillery. Sure. It's not facing the right way, so the other shot from before would probably be better anyway. Does it just bring us to the beach here again anyway? This is basically just like which way around the reef we want to go? Or something like that? Is kind of what it seems like. Hi, Inke. Come here. Come here. Come here, Inke. Gosh darn it. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, really? Okay, so. What's going on over here? Can we get a better artillery shot? Hold on. Here's a Raichu. Surfing around. Come on. Oh man, I was hoping I'd be able to get a pretty good one there. Okay, smack artillery like that. And then bonk. Come on. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Here, take the thing. Take it! Take it, you filthy animal! <laughs> Boop. Boop. Well, that's enough research. <laughs> Uh, that's enough research. I guess. Oh, the NK just despawned in the distance. What happened to calling it? And that was enough research. <laughs> what happened to calling it? That was enough research. The professor lied to me. The professor absolutely lied to me just there. What the heck? I can't believe it. I can't believe you've done this. Well, what you think, professor? Oh, you're back. Yes, I am indeed back. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, let's show the professor. Let's show the professor all these photos, and that's probably going to be where we wrap things up for for this, most likely. This has been an interesting journey with new Pokemon Snap. This has been an interesting journey. Six streams, four streams for, like, the main game, and then we came back a little bit later for uh, stream numero five. Sieto and uh, Cinco here. Probably should have done five and then six, but I did six and then five. Freaking. Oh, man. It's so close to Diamond. Gosh darn it. That's a new record there, at least. That's a new record there. But yeah, like I was saying, if... Hey, we got a Diamond Magikarp. Sweet. Like I was saying, if I do randomly get the urge one day to hop into new Pokemon Snap again, I will. If I randomly get the urge, I'll do it. But most likely, we're going to be committing to some other games here because I've got a bazillion games going on on the, on the channel right now. All right, that's our first two-star Raichu, apparently. Crystal Bloom. Sure, let's get the one with some Viper over it. I don't know. That's what we'll do. We'll get the area up to research level two. Research level dos. Sweet. Oh, I need like 100,000 now to level it up again. That's a lot. Step forward for our research, but Pokemon in the area getting comfortable with you. Yeah, after all the apples, I've been chucking at them. Or whatever the heck. New record. Yes. A new record. It's an excellent score, but don't stop. I will stop. I will stop, though. We got a bunch of other games to do on the channel here. Is the thing. I want to see that one Bidoof shot. I should have saved it to my album now, realizing. Because just like the Wailer, that would have been perfect for a thumbnail. I was planning on putting it on a thumbnail, but then I realized I didn't put it in an album. So freaking. I probably don't have that Bidoof shot. Gosh diggity darn it. What would be good for, like, the thumbnail of this? No. If I can't use that beautiful one. Do I have any other wacky ones? Your space. What was in my album? Is there anything wacky in my album? <laughs> There's like the whale and whatnot. I could just do one of these other beatoofs. That's what I could do. But like... Enlarge. Bam! Thumbnail material. Sure. I'll take a freaking... I'll print screen, make that into a thumbnail later. Cause sure. Not gonna get those two beatups next to each other that I did before. Because I freaking forgot to save it to my album. Research titles. What? I got apparently 157 sweet medals. That Blastoise got 46. Wow, isn't that crazy? 
Isn't that crazy? Your info, whale? Change your profile icon. No, I like the hat and whatnot. Top shots. Okay, so that's apparently my one that has like the most points and that has the most sweet medals. No longer that Arbok from the beginning anymore. Hmm. hmm. 157 sweet medals. I'm so good at the game. So good, man. But yeah, that's a... Uh... It's been an interesting journey with new Pokemon Snap. I did generally enjoy this game. I don't think it's a perfect game. Like, why does Eevee not have a shadow over there, for example? I don't think it's perfect. But it's fun. It's enjoyable. And, like, I never played the original Pokemon Snap back when it was, like, a main kind of thing. Like, I played it on this channel earlier this year before this game released. But, apart from that, I never got to experience it, like, in its prime and whatnot. But, this game felt, like, really, really way more flushed out compared to that, as one would expect, I guess. It was actually quite a lot of fun, and it seems like it's very much, it seems very much like it's a game very designed for, like, completionists. Like, if you want to have a lot of stuff to do, there's a lot of stuff to do. Like, it's a game just about taking photos of Pokemon, but there's a freaking lot of stuff going on here if you, uh, if you want to keep on playing. Like, it seems like the kind of game that you could dump a lot of hours into if you really wanted to, you know? So, yeah. I generally liked it. I generally liked the game. I will say. But yeah, that'll wrap up our new Pokemon Snap shenanigans. So, thanks all who stopped by and hung out. Hung out for this and whatnot. Hey, look, there's the chat updating on the laptop screen over there. Even though I don't even have a laptop there anymore. Maybe I should eventually, like, update this. Because there's, like, a lot of things that have changed. Like, there's my old layout. Or, not my old layout. My old capture card. My old laptop that was there. Now it's just another monitor that's there. So, like, a few things have changed about, like, my whole setup here that that's not reflective of anymore. But, yeah, that'll be where I wrap things up. So, thanks all who stopped by and hung out. Next time we hop into Pokemon is probably going to be freaking... Oh, I guess it'll be Pokemon Platinum's postgame. I was about to say Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, but I guess it'll be Pokemon Platinum's postgame. And next YouTube stream and stream will be some Skyward Sword HD. And the next stream and stream in general will be later tonight, Tales of Asperia, to finish off that game. So always got a whole bunch of things going on. So yeah, definitely, definitely not a lack of content around here, to say the least. So, well, take care all, and until next time, I'll see ya.